Those who are new can have a hard time to understand nirvana. It can take multiple lives to achieve enlightenment. But we live now. How do you explain Buddhism is different from other hypnosis theorem, like religion, etc., just to give the mind some sense of purpose? Well, first of all, giving the mind some sense of purpose is a good thing, no? Um, but just giving the mind some sense of purpose implies that it actually doesn't um, lead to that purpose. It doesn't achieve the purpose that it inclines towards. That's not the case in Buddhism. The purpose that it gives you is actually something you can achieve in this lifetime. Now, you may not. It may, as you say, take lifetimes, but that's, I think, inconsequential. The, the difference is, um, in the sense that your question is being asked, those other systems, whichever they might be, that provide a sense of purpose but do nothing else, um, are, are fall, you know, have no uh, development. You know. that the, the, what you're saying is that there are systems that don't actually lead to any any result. Now, first of all, having a sense of purpose can be highly um, empowering. So there's that, and I assume you acknowledge that. But Buddhism, of course, does much more than that. Buddhism does lead you to nirvana, albeit potentially quite slowly for some. Um, for others, it can happen in this life. So there's um, you know, there's there's really no comparison between you know Buddhism actually does lead you there. So um, the question kind of is missing that element. Now, um, as to not being able to understand Nirvana, I think there's another element to this question. And it has to do with um, people's inability to you know, um, to really strive for nibbana. Well, you're not quite asking that, but there is that sense of um, you know, is uh, what is it that we're we're aiming for? And in that sense, uh, well, it, usually this is a valid statement that um, yes, indeed. The biggest problem with Buddhist practice, or not the biggest problem, a, a, a problem with Buddhist practice is um, the uh, ideation, no, the, the conceptualization of Nibbana as something, as a thing, often a very scary thing, something that, whoa, that, that, that is, I'll be gone. What will happen to me if I achieve nibana, Nirvana, right? But in fact, nirvana means freedom. It's a way of saying, well, it's, 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 it's a specific way of saying freedom in the sense of freeing yourself, letting go. So nirvana is not being bound up. That's literally what it means. So it simply refers to the culmination of letting go, you know, which um, for the meditator is quite clearly, uh, quite quickly evident to be a good thing, as we see that the things that we're holding on to are causing us suffering. We see that our uh, desires are causing us suffering, our aversion um, is causing us suffering. All of these things, our delusion, our arrogance, our conceit, all of these things are causing us suffering. So we see that, that this kind of nirvana, in the sense of letting go, that's all, which is all it means, is a good thing. Nirvana simply means that final where you just say enough and you let go and the mind is it, it, it's like uh, the mind is here all the experiences are, are around it and so the mind keeps going out to different things so Nirvana is when the mind says enough and it stops it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't run away and leave you know, leave its center it becomes perfectly centered uh, it, it, in a sense, it, there's a cessation, so there's no thinking, there's no awareness, in that sense. But uh, it doesn't, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be scary. It's just a no more, enough. That's all. <laughs>